I apologize for those of you that turned in for the hymn sing earlier today. Um, due to uh, technical issues with our internet provider, uh, we did not have the bandwidth to broadcast at that point. Uh, we are broadcasting now, as you can tell, but with uh, limited resources. We hope they will rectify this uh, before next week. Um, thank you all for being here, and uh, let's prepare ourselves now for worship. I invite you to join us in singing the opening hymn, number 300, Christ has made the sure foundation, which is found in the bulletin on the website.
Alleluia. Christ is risen. The Lord, the Lord is, is risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. May his grace and peace be with you. May, May he fill our, our hearts, hearts with joy. joy. Give us grace to love one another, to search for truth, and to walk in the ways of justice and peace, so that we may abide in the Father's love always. Amen. Amen. A reading from Acts. But filled with the Holy Spirit, he gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said. I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they covered their ears and with a loud shout all rushed together against him. Then they dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. And the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning Stephen, he prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he knelt down and cried out in a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he had said this, he died. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Let us sing from Psalm 31, as shown in your bulletin.
a reading from 1 Peter. Like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow into salvation, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. Come to him, a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight. And like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house, to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in scripture, See, I am laying as in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. To you then who believe, he is precious. But for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner, and a stone that makes them stumble, and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the word, as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus Christ according to John. Jesus told his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, but if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact, will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. This is the Gospel of Christ. meditations of all our hearts be pleasing and acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. This morning's Gospel is a snippet from the Gospel of John. 
The beginning of the reading is truly beautiful and very well known. In my father's house, there are many dwelling places. This small section of John fills us with hope. It renews our minds. It comforts our very being. But this section of John has another super important feature. It has one of the seven I am statements. This isn't a surprise since the purpose of the Gospel of John is simple. In fact, it's so simple that it's spelled out in John 20, verse 31, where we're told, These are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ. The entirety of John focuses on two questions. Who is Jesus? And what do we do with his words, with his teachings? This morning, we're going to focus on the first question. Who is Jesus? Throughout John, we are given seven I am statements. Not only are all of these statements important, but the number seven is also pretty intriguing. In fact, here's a few Bible facts about the number seven. The number seven itself is mentioned 735 times in the Bible. The Bible can be divided into seven sections. There's the Law, the Prophets, the Psalms, the Gospels, the Epistles, Paul's Epistles, and the Book of Revelation. In the Book of Hebrews, Paul ascribes seven different titles to Jesus. He's called the High Priest, the Apostle, the Author of Salvation, the Son, the King of Righteousness, the King of Peace, and the Living God. There's also the seven miracles Jesus performed on the holiest of holy days, the Sabbath days. But most importantly, and for our purpose here today, seven is important because the number seven is a number of perfection, a number of completeness. The number seven is considered spiritual perfection, a symbol of God's work by a bunch of super impressive, learned, brilliant historians and theologians. So here we are this morning presented with one of the seven I am statements, and since our lectionary doesn't cover all of them, I think it's a good thing for us to think on all seven of these statements this morning, especially during this time of change, of uncertainty, of physical distancing, and of fear. The first I am statement is in the sixth chapter of John, and it's well known, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never thirst. It teaches us that Jesus can sustain us, that Jesus offers us complete fulfillment in nourishment, sustenance, and spirituality. It teaches us that as bread sustains physical life, Christ offers and sustains spiritual life. This verse reminds me that even when I feel drained, even when I feel like I can't possibly add one more task to my day, that Christ is there to help recharge me, to refuel me, to nourish me. I am the bread of life, reminds me that no matter what, faith and love prevail. Then we move to John 8, verse 12. I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Through this, we learn that we don't need to live in darkness and hopelessness. We learn that Jesus tears holes in the darkness, and the light always overtakes the dark. We hear that to a world lost in darkness, Christ offers himself as our personal guide. This I find particularly comforting during this time. This lack of physical presence with others has been driving me a little bit batty lately. As an extrovert, I need those interactions. I need that energy to match my own. And lately, it feels like everything is on hold, like I've been put on hold. When I start to feel like this, I remember this verse, and I remember that I'm never alone, were never alone, and that as dark as it may feel, we just need to look for the holes in the darkness. It's through those holes that we see the light shining through. Next, we arrive at John 10, verse 9. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved, and will come in and go out and find pasture. Jesus is teaching that he is the only way to salvation, the only way to the heavenly creator. Others may come and try to declare that they are the way to life, but they're thieves and robbers. Jesus is the only true way. There is no other door to eternal life except through him. This eternal life, this mystery of our faith, it's only accessible through him, 
There's lots of imitations, but only one Jesus. This one reminds me of the social media we're all ingesting, sometimes overdosing on right now. We've got some legitimate sources of news, such as Dina Hinshaw and her amazing daily briefings. Then we've got the junk news that shows up in our social media feeds, our emails, and on our televisions. We have to pick which to follow, which to believe, knowing that there are good sources and knowing that there are harmful sources. It's tricky business. I tend to try to follow only those that I know for sure are on the up and up, kind of like why I'm a follower of Jesus. I know Jesus is the real deal. Now we arrive at last week's gospel. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Here we are reminded that we have to not only follow, but that we need to trust Jesus. Not just for eternal life, but for our safety, for our protection, for our guidance, and for our strength. Through this trust, we know our shepherd's voice, and our shepherd knows us. Jesus protects us, his followers, just as a shepherd protects their flock from predators. In Jesus' embrace, there is warmth, love, protection, and safety. Through times of fear, trepidation, and the uncertainty of the future, with some restrictions being lifted, some remaining in place, the fear of the spread, the fear of community transmission, a new tracker app for cell phones, it's calming to stop, take a few deep breaths, and remember that we've got arms embracing us. We've got a God who absolutely adores us, and that comforts me. The next I Am statement is from a story we heard a few weeks ago. When Lazarus had died and was placed in a tomb, when Jesus made it to where the body lay and spoke with Lazarus' sister, who was devastated that her brother had died and felt that if only Jesus had arrived sooner, and then she verbally told Jesus that she felt this way. And Jesus responds to her by saying, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. We learn that through Jesus, death is not the final word. Even though physical death comes for all of us, we live on spiritually with Jesus. Jesus brings life to all of us, if only we trust, and even when we don't. That's a powerful I am statement. It's like Jesus telling each and every one of us, I've got your back, and I'll never let you go. Right now, that's exactly the kind of voice, the kind of running track we need in our brains. You are important. You are loved. And I am here for you. Perhaps one of the best-known I am statements follows with I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Through this snippet in John, we know that there are not multiple ways to God. There is one, and that way is through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Jesus is the source of all truth and all knowledge about God. When Jesus refers to the truth, he is referencing himself. Through Jesus, we receive freedom. And then the final I am statement. It comes to us in chapter 15, verse 5, and says, I am the vine, and you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. To bear fruit, we must be connected and nourished with and by Jesus. Jesus is the vine, we are the branches. We need to be dependent on Jesus, because without Jesus, we can do nothing. But with Jesus, we can exceed our own expectations. Being connected to Jesus, we are able and allow his life, his love, to flow through us. So through this dark time of uncertainty, loneliness, sadness, grief, and distress, remember that we have Jesus, who nourishes us continually. Through Jesus, we find the strength, the courage, the fortitude to go on. So you might be thinking, okay, she spent 10 minutes go going over stuff we've all heard before at one point or another. What's the big deal? Why are the seven I am statements so important? Way back in Exodus, Moses and God were standing around and chatting. God directed Moses to go and tell his people that their deliverance was near. Moses, knowing his people, figured his people would want some proof. They'd want to know who sent Moses with this amazing message in order to believe it. The conversation went like this. Moses said to God, 
If I come to the Israelites and say to them, the God of your ancestors has sent me to you, and they ask me, what is his name? What shall I say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. He said further, thus you shall say to the Israelites, I am has sent me to you. In the Gospel of John, the I am of Moses' time is now standing, physically standing in front of the people. They can now reach out and touch the I am. No messenger is needed. The I am is there in bodily form. I am was right there, ready to be their truth, their light, their nourishment, their pathway, their vine, their good shepherd, their very life. The I am is whatever and wherever we need him to be in our lives. And the I am is ready to be our safety, our cheerleader, our motivator, our confidant, our friend. The I am is for all of us. The I am works through love, through charity, through compassion. As followers of Christ, we are to reflect the great I am onto all that we meet, being the hands, eyes, and feet of Jesus Christ here on earth. May we always remember that the goodness, love, and mercy of the great I am has been given to each and every one of us, freely, without ask. We are blessed with and showered with God's grace, love, and mercy. And as Christians, as loving members of Christ's earthly family, this goodness, love, and mercy is to be reflected onto all those we meet in this crazy, unpredictable, ever-changing thing called life. Because after all, as the song goes, they'll know that we are Christians by our love. Amen. Let us confess our faith as we say, we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the light of the world to come. Amen. I invite you to take whatever posture you find most prayerful for the prayers of the people. We ask for your presence and guidance as we struggle to respond to the spread of the novel coronavirus in our world, our country, and this community. We are gathered today together in your name through the marvels of technology to give you our thanks and our praise and to bring forward our needs and concerns in the face of the virus and the drastic changes that it has caused for all of us. Thank you for all nurses, doctors, and other medical professionals who, at risk to themselves and their families, work faithfully to care for your people in hospitals, clinics, and nursing homes everywhere. Thank you for storekeepers and clerks. Thank you for farmers and truck drivers, for police officers and firefighters, and for all who provide essential services despite uncertainty and risks. Give them continued strength, compassion, 
and your protection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the unemployed and for owners of businesses that are now closed. Help us all to survive this economic downturn. We pray for those who are especially vulnerable at this time, the elderly and the infirm, the poor and the homeless, and for all who live alone. We pray for those who are ill yet isolated from those people who are closest to them. With the presence of your Holy Spirit, please ease their suffering, comfort them, and restore them to good health. We pray for the souls of those who have died. May they rest in peace with you. We are grieving for those who have lost loved ones while prevented from saying goodbye, and who are perhaps now without even the comfort of the physical presence of family and friends. And we pray for refugees and for all those people who are in war-torn countries without access to medical care, food, or hope. We need a miracle to spare them from this illness and from continued suffering. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of our lives, during this time of physical isolation and continuing distance, help us to strengthen our relationships with you and with one another. Give us gifts of perspective, gratitude, and courage so that we may face our own challenges gracefully and respond generously to the needs of others. Save us from the panic and fear that might distract us or diminish our faith in your love for us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the leaders of your church throughout the world. Here at home, we pray for Jane, our bishop, and for our clergy at Holy Trinity, Chris, Danielle, Robin, Alan, and Penny, and for their families, for John, and our music ministry, for Eileen and our children and families ministry, for the equally, and for those who are recently baptized. Today we pray especially for Roger, Ed, Father Allen, Gertrude, Eva, Peyton, Kaylee, Margaretha, Jerry, Alvina, Natalie, Hannah, Dorothy, Dr. Bob, Raymond and Ruth, Barb, Ruth, Jean, Mildred, Margaret Ann and family, for Brenda, Aaron, and Jenny, and for those we hold in our own hearts, and for those whose needs may only be known to you. Lord, in your mercy, please hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, help us to use this time of uncertainty to grow closer to you, to acknowledge our need for you and for each other. Unanswered questions suddenly confront us. So teach us to meet them with the hope and confidence that comes from believing in you. Hope and confidence that your son has shown us, even on the cross. The hope and confidence that redeems and saves us all. Thank you for showing us new ways to be your church. New ways to keep it alive and vibrant and witnessing to the risen Christ, especially in times like these. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Peace of the risen Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace. Let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself an offering and sacrifice to God. And join me as we sing our offertory hymn together, number 451. King of love, O Christ, we crown you.
gracious God, you show us your way and give us your divine life. May everything we do be directed by the knowledge of your truth. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, the risen Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of heaven and earth. We give you thanks and praise for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb, who has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he destroyed death, and by his rising to life again, he has won for us eternal life. Therefore, joining our voices with the whole company of heaven, we sing our joyful hymn of praise to proclaim the glory of your name. thanks to you, Lord our God, for the goodness and love you have made known to us in creation, in calling Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night that he was handed over to suffering and death, a death he freely accepted, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, according to his command, of praise and thanksgiving to you, Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, 
that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us with your Son in his sacrifice, that we made acceptable in him, may be sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, reconcile all things in Christ and make them new, and bring us to that city of light where you dwell with all your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. died with you on the cross. Now we are raised to new life. We were buried in your tomb. Now we share in your resurrection. Live in us that we may live in you. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Communion hymn is number 569, Come My Way, My Truth, My Life.
us pray. God of love, in this Eucharist we have heard your truth and shared in your life. May we always walk in your way. In the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the Church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> May Almighty God, who has redeemed us and made us his children through the resurrection of his Son, our Lord, bestow upon you the riches of his blessing. Amen. Amen. May God, who through <coughs> the water of baptism has raised us from sin into newness of life, make you holy and worthy to be united with Christ forever. Amen. Amen. May God, who has brought us out of bondage to sin into true and lasting freedom in the Redeemer, bring you to your eternal inheritance. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit keep you and remain upon you now and always. Amen. Our final hymn is number 210, Yours Be the Glory, Risen Conquering Son.